Okay everyone, we're going to try and show you how to make a leather mask here. I'm going to show you everything that I basically use to make masks and then I kind of prep some of the pieces just to make the first part a little bit easier but you really won't miss anything. Um, just easy steps which are self-explanatory and I'll show you with the tools. Um, first, some basic stuff you need. Uh, I like to use a, a face form. You can find these at craft stores. Um, leather stores. I, I buy my supplies at www.tandyleather.com and I will put that up as a little blip and I will put it also over in the comment section. So this is not necessary. I just like it to give some shapes and forms. Um, again, we're going to be showing you how to make these types of basic masks. Uh, something made out of leather. This is very easy to do and they can get very complicated. Um, if you look in my introduction, uh, there's an array of masks that I've made that I go from something simple and easy to make to other more complicated pieces. We're going to kind of do like a, a easy intermediate piece and uh, it'll take probably a couple tutorials but we'll give you the basic idea. So face form, not totally necessary. Um, I like to cut out a pre-shape. Uh, this is a mask I do a lot but this whole basic shape it generally fits anybody's face unless they've got you know if they're a larger person or something like that and you can move the eyes easily um, but I like to do this as a as a basic on top of leather um, some basics your exactos uh, mini exacto which I totally love using it's retractable it's like a pen for that fine detail and uh, so these are some of my favorites I really like this because if it gets dull you just chip it off um, and you have a whole new blade and it's really easy to use. Um, small hand blade uh, for finer detail uh, and getting in there more closer to the leather. Some embossing tools. This is a heat gun or heat heat tool that has a replaceable tip and it comes with like five or six different tips. I think it's like ten, fifteen dollars at the craft store. Comes in really handy for burning in detail into leather. Uh, and this is a uh, like a heat gun to um, either do markings or to emboss, you know, um, those fake diamonds and rubies and sapphire stones and stuff like that that you can actually do really nice on the leather. Um, this is a burnishing tool or, or a shaper and it really allows you to get into into the leather and give it shape and form. Um, not necessary. I use some, some of these here like these putty putty tools, uh, you can use these as well and you can get these relatively cheap for a couple dollars at the craft store. Um, you know, it's got the sharp edges you can mark into the leather and it's also got these smooth edges for actually shaping. Um, I'm going to show you the leather. Uh, this is a, a, a roll of leather. Um, I call it belly leather. Um, if you go to Tandy Leather or, or if you order it online, you can order this sheet for anywhere from $18 to thirty thirty five dollars uh, depending on the quality um, what really drives the price is like the thickness of the leather it comes in all varieties so just if you can see here how really thick this is I like thick leather because it allows me to work down to a thinner leather versus it whereas if you buy a thick leather um, you won't be able to work that much with it you won't be able to change the grade on it um, and one of the key tools that you're totally going to need is this little handy thing here. Um, at the leather store, it's called a skiver. And I'm going to quickly start showing you what this does. Move all this out of the way. Um, I take my pattern on the big piece of leather. That'll make about four or five masks, depending on size. Um, I lay it out. And just with a pencil or any anything that's kind of blunt, you can just go around here and trace the basic shape, and then it just leaves a mark in the leather. Cut it out with your exacto knife, and then we move on from there. And I've already pre-cut, I've already pre-cut one that we're going to work with, so we'll we'll move on to that in a few minutes. Um, so we shape it, we we cut it out, and then once you cut out your shape, because um, this is really thick and sometimes this can be hard to shape or work with. Some people like to work with this type of thick leather, especially um, if you're making like an armband or anything like that. Um, you can want to keep it a little bit on the thicker side, but for masks, uh, I like to make it thin. So with a skiver, all you simply do is you're just shaving down the leather to make it more, pop, more easy to work with, uh, more malleable, and uh, more 
you get more shapes and you can get better details in it. So you just keep working the leather and working the leather. Um, you want to be careful with the edges because sometimes it, if it, the skyver catches it right, it tears up the leather sides and you want to try and prevent that. Another good tip is when you're cutting out your shape, one of the things you want to remember is to always keep your knife uh, facing in so that you're not cutting an edge like this here where the edge is facing outside because when you airbrush that and when you shape the leather that's very visible. You want a clean edge, you want something more like this, either straight up and down edge or something that's been cut in so that you actually don't see uh, the edge work when you're cutting out your mask or when you're shaping it later. So we've done, we've shown you skiving uh, and again just you're running your your skiver and you're thinning out the leather. Pretty basic. Now, uh, once you've done all that, you have your basic shape. Um, here I've already cut a piece out that I know I'm going to work with. Um, I already skived the back. It, it's, it's nice and thin. It's easy to work with. The next step is to soften the leather and harden it at the same time. It's, it's a dual process. You want to take um, some hot water and it really doesn't matter what you put it in and you want to take this really complicated stuff that we call Elmer's glue um, I used to buy this really expensive stuff to harden leather and then the handy dandy craft store taught me that uh, all you need is this stuff and of course it's like frozen solid here there we go um, and all you do is take it in warm water and add your Elmer's glue the more glue you add to the water the stiffer your mask will be in the end. Um, it's kind of an experimentation, but I've been doing it for such a while that I know that this is maybe a gallon of water, half a gallon, almost a gallon of water to this much of glue. Give it a nice little shake here till you get the cloudy mixed water. Mix it in really good. And what's going to happen is this warm water is going to loosen up the leather and you're going to soak it in here for not even a minute. You're just going to let it soak in. Uh, the heat from the water is going to loosen up the pores of the leather. It's going to re-enliven it. And then the glue is going to seep into the pores and into the leather. And eventually what will happen is, um, as the mask dries, it'll, it'll take on the glue and the glue will harden the mask over time and allow it to retain its shape. So um, you can't skip the glue step and you got to remember hot water or at least lukewarm water to loosen up the pores of the leather. And while that's doing that, 